here we go and we're not live still but we're live it's happening live and then <laughs> it will happen on the internet <laughs> i don't know what summer's talking about but we're not like, like live streaming right now and m- yeah we might not all transparency sake might not for a while <laughs> uh yeah hey guys uh we're hanging out at airplane rollerblades again kids from southeast michigan talking about music super stoked today because we got our good friend rob aka broccoli aka um a lot of other various performance names over the years we'll get into that in a second but uh very good to have our friend rob on the show today Uh, thank you so much for having me welcome yes oh (laughs) very good to be here yeah we got we've got a lot to talk about with rob because he's got (laughs) he's got a lot of stuff going on (laughs) he's been arranging a bunch of shows this summer new low shows he's been playing his own shows uh and i feel i feel like there's always a project in the works going on with you too that i like don't even know secret. about yet until it is. yeah a secret <laughs> 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 you always got some t- tricks up your sleeve oh uh, man you know <laughs> <laughs> uh. um yeah I don't, so you want to talk about your projects first or actually you just got back from dc let's talk maybe for a second about uh what you were doing there totally yeah um so uh this really great group called Optimize from U of M was uh, kind enough to uh, fund me starting Nulo as a company for the first time, which has been really cool. And so they kind of organized a trip for all the people um, that have been funded through them to go down to D.C. for a conference called MCon, um, which is pretty cool. It's just about like a lot of like startup um, you know, philosophies and uh, a lot of issues that are kind of like relevant to millennials. Uh, conferences kind of give me like a weird vibe, but it was really interesting though. And coolest part, I will say, is meeting Sylvia Earle, who is probably one of my hugest idols in the environmental field. She was like the pioneer of women in marine biology. And she was like one of the first people to get hired by National Geographic as like an explorer. Whoa. And so she is like super rad, and uh, I got to take a selfie with her. So That's National cool. Geographic, <laughs> we were watching that last night. They have some like crazy shit. Actually, it's Shark Week right now. I is don't it know Shark right Week? now. Yeah, I didn't know that we were watching. Um, I don't know. Uh, have you guys like seen it recently? It's like getting uh, really like dramatized. I haven't even know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's I a guess shame. that's Discovery it, Channel, not? not National Geographic. Oh, uh, okay. But um, yeah. Shark Week. Is Philly D. Austin, that guy I watch on YouTube? I have no idea who Philly D. That dude is. I watch on YouTube. You know that dude I watch. On oh, YouTube. Phil DeFranco. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is he a shark? He hosts no, sometimes. He, yeah, he's a, he's a he's a twenty five foot great white shark that has. A <laughs> 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 yeah, you know Phil DeFranco. <laughs> With an extremely charming wow. sense of humor. <laughs> no, that's um. Sorry, we totally got on a tangent there, but um, no, that's super interesting. I wanted to kind of talk to you um. Because uh, you, your uh, your major when you were going to U of M was it program in the environment? Yes. Yeah, I had a couple of friends doing that, but I think that you have a really really unique perspective um, in the sense that um, like you're really focused on the intersection between between like what you have studied and and uh, like in school and like where that where your art is coming from um, and. Yeah, how you can affect the community with your art in really various ways. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, no, I'd love to. Um, Yeah, so um, I kind of chose that major, um, to be honest, because it was something that would be challenging for me. Like, I'm not not the most technically, you know, left-brained person, um, but it was really cool to learn kind of like the more nitty-gritty side of the science and then the music and the art was something I knew I would always kind of pursue on my own and it was something that... Um, you know, really was like personally fulfilling in terms of outside of school. And so, yeah, pretty much just been last couple of years has been a process of trying to get those two to work together, you know, um, and feel like I could spend time on one or both of those things and kind of be contributing to the other. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, so that's kind of what New Low tries to be. We're like very committed to like building a community of musicians and just kind of getting opportunities for local musicians and, you know, getting people's art out there while also associating their music and their art and different things with the environment and trying to like get some of that money and energy and all the good things that come with that, you know, uh, towards both of those. So, yeah, I, I think 
one really cool thing is that I uh, I've watched so many people that weren't music majors kind of struggle with the balance between uh, their doing their art and uh, and not failing out of their, <laughs> their yeah. major. But uh, you kind of instead of uh, trying to balance your time between the two, you've kind of found an intersection. Totally. Um, yeah. So so do you want to? You started talking about Nulo in like in what you uh, were doing in DC with it, but when did it start and kind of how how was it born? I know that it was involved with this U of M uh, totally grant, but yeah, yeah. So um, it all started off. Um, I would say people always ask me what the name is all about, and I don't really have a specific reason anymore, other Sounds than that I thought cool. it sounded cool. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's what I that's what I say I, now. I but um, originally it was. Um, the idea was a no, a new like low standard or like low set of expectations for house parties. And so I wanted to go down to like South Campus, which for those of you that don't know at U of M is kind of an area that's like, you know, more of the general student population, like music and musicians and artists, at least that we know are generally in Carytown, but you know, everyone's everywhere. But, um, and so I really just felt like there were a lot of people down there that hadn't seen kind of what the student music scene had to offer yeah, and so definitely. the idea was like to bring some people down there and I know like other people have tried to do that too and and I think it's great um you know so that was kind of the original idea and then when I got involved in Optimize I had to start kind of thinking like what would if I were to create you know like a business or like an organization like what would it look like and how would I you know integrate what I care about in terms of the environment with the music and art stuff and so it was a, definitely a not always easy process and like went through many months of like back and forth and like you know prioritizing and all that stuff um and i'm still doing it you know it's, it's still very much kind of a fluid venture but um yeah it feels really good to just have be able to like do both of those things at once you mm -hmm. know is really nice how did you um get that partnership started with optimize yeah so it's they're really really supportive in terms of just being like open to listening to what you got to say like my idea was definitely one of the more unconventional of the group like a lot of them are you know apps and like different things like that but mm -hmm. um the founders of optimize have been really cool and actually two of the guys that are run it jeff pittich and jeff Sorensen, actually played with their band vegas at one of my shows and so i think that kind of helped too is like you know they're musicians and they understand like the appeal of of kind of cultivating a music scene and like trying to give people an opportunity to watch music and people an opportunity to play you know and so uh but yeah they were so nice pretty much just gave me feedback on all of my ideas that like they do for everyone else and then at the end it's like a pitch process you know so you just kind of you know do a presentation and hope for the best <laughs> so yeah that's uh, yeah it's a cool thing that's uh kind of exists in the college scene the the possibility for grants but i feel like it always takes like a few years for you to realize that it's there yeah and then you kind of realize it and then you graduate and it's gone it was so last <laughs> minute i know i was it was like my last try at doing <laughs> that and yeah. yeah um so you just had a new low show this last weekend on yeah. friday right mm -hmm. yeah um who was playing at that and what were you guys donating to and yeah what was the yeah what was the cause that, uh, that the money went to totally so we donated uh fifty dollars to the michigan urban farming initiative from that show which is actually another optimized startup funny enough and they do an urban farm in detroit um that's really cool and they do it on like a pay-as-you-can model for the community members there so um you know they're definitely got their i guess their hearts and their wallets in the right place i would say um but yeah, it was really cool to have um, those bands play. So Evan Haywood, you guys obviously know him. And then he's out in Hamtramck now, but he was a big dude in the Ann Arbor scene. And then Steph Chura, um, who's played with Shells, who's like a definite staple in the Ann Arbor scene. Um, so both of them were on the bill. And then Heaters, a band from Grand Rapids, psych rock band, uh, really cool dudes. And I loved that the most because they played at a tenant show a couple years ago in my living room and then now they're kind of like more got some more momentum I guess and so it was cool to like get them in like a legit venue you know and uh just funny how like you meet people and then two years later you're both just doing crazy stuff yeah, you know? yeah they're like doing uh, it they're uh they're like building uh, a following and it's definitely for sure yeah definitely um I want to talk to you about um so like if you go if you go to a broccoli show um um 
we should talk about like maybe like what what people are about to expect because you got this you got this um this inter uh, like this intersection of a lot of like various instrumentations and like unorthodox instrumentations and you got like uh, uh, these you know like pretty explicit hip hop elements but then also like there's this big uh, like performance art aspect that I think is really unique but it's also a testament to like something that's pretty unique that I think is happening in an kind of Ann Arbor specifically I think as I've kind of gone around and kind of adventured into various music scenes there's something kind of specific about Ann Arbor that seems to have this performance art element that seems to be a little bit more prevalent uh, do you feel that way or dude yeah and I feel like I definitely couldn't have even like tried out an idea that's kind of as weird as broccoli without a supportive kind of group of, you know, and like the open mic stuff, like that's just so essential. I mean, like, you know, Vale and Knock and Metal Frat and Canterbury, like whatever, like, um, you know, having an opportunity to workshop really weird things that are a little more unconventional, it was just essential to doing that. And um, yeah, I mean, I draw a lot of inspiration from just, you know, like it could be actors or it could be like musicians, obviously. And then like specifically people that are kind of around here. I mean, I feel like everyone's no matter what, if you're a musician, you've got kind of like a stage persona or presence sort of thing. But um, some people are more deliberate like that. Um, And I guess it's not so character based, but like when Isaac and them were doing the sleepy show, which uh, for those of you that are out there, um, basically a show in an attic that was kind of curated to be a very like relaxing and intimate kind of cuddly atmosphere and just an opportunity to kind of experience music like that in a in a different setting um but even stuff like that you know like a lot of what i'm trying to do is like making where i'm performing a space that's where some weird stuff is going on you know and uh the stage like the line between the stage and and the crowd i like to like blur that line sometimes bring people on or whatever you know so um but yeah i definitely couldn't have even like thought to do anything like that without people around that were also down with it so yeah yeah how did um all of the different characters develop they all kind of have their own storyline and um different they're all all of the raps that the different characters do are kind of different i know that you had you've you started with like kind of dividing them in shows and now i think that i've seen some shows where you do several characters Mm -hmm. um yeah so how's that grown totally so the first time was I was it was like the first rap show that like I guess he'd ever done I'd ever done and uh it was I ne- like needed a, a rap name and I had this st- sign that I wanted to use as a part of the costume that had ACP written on it and so I was like okay I just need to make a name that has these initials and then so Alan C. Pickard was the first Alan one C. and then so Alan C. Pickard's first show also happened to be his last show because it was like a farewell show so then oh. I was like well, I guess there has to be another one now. And then I was just thinking of like the weirdest thing I could possibly think of. And then, of course that came to Feather Pillow, who was a businessman and Alan C. Pickard's ex-manager. So then it like started to kind of I didn't build like- there was an intersection between- Totally, them. yeah. It's it's yeah. not always so explicit, but like, yeah, there's definitely, so, so Feather Pillow was Alan C. Pickard's ex-manager and they had some financial disagreements mm-hmm. that eventually led to Alan <laughs> getting really bummed and leaving. But- um, yeah, it's pretty much just, uh, there's no, there's no real specific kind of plan. It's more, you know, maybe an idea that's of a person that could be related to the last character or just something that's really interesting, like a type of person, or a lot of them are kind of focused around prof- professions, weirdly enough. I don't know why that is necessarily, but, you know, a different job and like someone's different place in the world based on that, and, you know, and then just expanding on that. Um, basically an experiment in like trying to imagine to be other people basically yeah yeah that's how deep do your storylines usually go or do you feel like you just take them along the way like do you did you enter into alan c pickard with like alan's got a wife and two kids or like or was it just kind of like if someone asked you a question in that moment you just decided those facts about alan yeah (laughs) it's interesting i would say probably a little bit of both because like in in making the character i feel like 
it needs to be kind of fleshed out enough for it to be a, re- you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a person, like a real thing, you know? And so to a certain extent, you have to be relatively complex. And, and to be honest, I mostly focus on the person themselves rather than, for example, like w- how, who they are in relation mm-hmm. to other people or, you know, um, but that being said, the characters related to themselves have often been in kind of like a this, then that, then that, you know, just in how they're connected to each other socially or in this like, Mm -hmm. you know, weird little world that Broccoli basically makes up. (laughs) So, yeah. And then it's weird too. The, I think in one of my other favorite parts is that, you know, you've got this dynamic of creator versus created. And so in a way you could argue that Broccoli, if there was a hierarchy of that, you know, he'd be kind of on the top and then like, Alan C. Pickard and all these people are kind of his creations or his like, you know, art form or pieces of art. Um, but they all are kind of in conversation with each other. So it's not really, I, I like to also like question the the difference between like an artist and the work they create and how much kind of independence they have from one another. Um, yeah. <laughs> I purposely okay. like am, am, am very ambig- ambiguous but about it all. That's super interesting to think about. Um, just because that's a unique perspective from probably my own art, because um, I don't, I don't think of it in terms of like characters or right. Um, mm. No, yeah, definitely. And also, do you always feel like you have control over the character? No, <laughs> that's that's like part of the fun is right. uh is like I really like to think that in certain cases they're kind of acting on their own, you know, and like mm. that's what like at least as I understand it, that's what broccoli does is he makes these characters and then they just kind of are what they are, you know, and he doesn't really control them. He just kind of has to interact with them, you know? So how, how did you get started in that being the, I know that you said open mics and stuff, Mm -hmm. places where you could experiment, but was there, what was the catalyst? And also what was the catalyst to start rapping too? Because I remember in the beginning you saying that you hadn't rapped before right before college right yeah yeah well i I'd, I'd, so I'd, I'd written a few yeah oh sorry to cut oh, you no, off no. um yeah so i uh i started writing just like on my own and with my friends and like freestyling at parties in high school but then i kind of let that go and my main art form was mostly just writing poems mm-hmm. um and really i think like sophomore year of college i i was getting a lot more into like you know meeting more people who were making art and music too so it expanded my kind of desire for what i wanted to make and then Eventually, it was like, well, I really should be rapping because I love rapping so much and I love rap music. And so it'd be almost wrong of me to not try it out a little. Um, but in terms of like the whole project, I think it probably spurred in part from my realization that so much of rap and the appeal of rap is kind of like the persona or like the the identity of the rapper and it kind of just is this whole thing and rappers will develop like an aesthetic or like a style Mm -hmm. and like even in terms of content you know you've got like you know stoner rappers like Wiz Khalifa you've got really like you know more horror core rappers or whatever like even Tech 9 maybe might be an example but you know people are just doing such widely different things with like who they are and crafting their kind of image and I guess to me I was like well what am I gonna do like I'm not like you know your conventional rap artist i would probably not be considered that based on my you know whatever like facets of my identity but um yeah just kind of like making a space for like like identities i could inhabit you know and uh just thinking of like i didn't want to rap as me you know i didn't want to just be like me rapping so i wanted to like okay how can i like expand the possibilities you know in some way i guess there's like the, the pressure of the the weirdness around you taking on the character, but I feel like, and then on the other hand, there's the uh, kind of it becomes almost natural, and you don't have as much pressure around. Oh, I'm I'm rapping, I'm doing this. It's more like this character's doing it, yes. and uh, totally and you can kind of divorce yourself from the, yeah the yes. stress of <laughs> that's, that's peculiar. It's one degree of separation, but not. Yeah, I don't know. It it definitely is like I kind of try to like uh I won't say absolve myself from responsibility, but yeah, when I'm di- when it, people are up there it's not me. It's you know, <laughs> which yeah, it's kind of freeing um in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so one of the thing uh, one of the things that I I guess appreciate or enjoy about um like going to a broccoli show is usually if, if I or, or like when I go um, like the people that are involved, like I go, it's all, 
it's all like my friends it's all the people who um like are involved in the music community and it like it it varies um like the last time i saw you I think like um like isaac and rebecca were doing stuff and it, but it's always like different mm -hmm. um but like having that um like through that and through like the kind of the focus on activism in the environment um there's like definitely a sense of community involved in the project um i guess what is your um what is your strategy in uh, helping to foster that community. Um, what do you think local musicians can do to help the community as a greater thing rather than like maybe just focusing on what they're doing? And then how do, um, I don't know, I'm asking a lot of questions. No, but that's but good. Just like themes of the music community. I guess. Totally. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think one thing that I am pretty proud of in terms of Nulo, and I, I don't like to pat it or me on the back or whatever but um that like any anybody who's like a local musician that has reached out to us we at least have attempted to get them something and always prioritize them in terms of like if we're looking for an opener or we need a slot to fill on a lineup if somebody has hit us up and like taken that step to like you know reach out to us like those are the people that we want to work with because they're the ones that are stoked about it you know mm -hmm. and i mean in the local scene it's not so much like this because i feel like a lot of people are kind of in it together but in the music scene at large you know oftentimes the dynamics can be weird it's like you know either you're being asked to play a show as a musician or you're looking for a show and there's all this back and forth um so yeah just just on a basic level like trying to give people opportunities um, I was super lucky and am still lucky anytime I'm able to play, you know, and so without other people believing in me or giving me an opportunity, I wouldn't be anywhere, you know, so I guess just like keeping that momentum going. Um, and then I think just music shows and art shows and just all that kind of stuff have this really just unique energy about them just the people that go to them and really get into them and vibe like th there's just this crazy energy that that you can't even really describe but um this is kind of an attempt i guess at like harnessing it or at least associating it with the environment which is something that i think is important and kind of also is a, a you know something we can rally around you know people have different levels of how much they care i guess about it but um you know something that's relevant to us all and um i would hope that both of those things can feed on each other in like a positive way you know so yeah um it's almost like I mean when you say that it makes me think about how like when we throw a party kind of show because we throw like lots of different kinds of shows mm -hmm, we'll throw yeah. shows that are very much obviously just a show or we have um it's more like party show where there's music and mm -hmm. there's it's around a party and those kind of shows are really fun for me because you end up getting people that wouldn't come and then are super excited about this scene that they didn't know about before but then you also get the people that are there um not for the, the music so then you kind of have them even one more level ex abstracted where you get the people there for the party people there for the music and then the people there for the environment factor um and then it, I, I feel like it ends up feeding each other though is yeah the, is the goal right totally yeah because i mean everyone has their own momentum right and their own like desires and reasons why they're there and so i guess just like making it so that they all are helping each other at once so like by supporting one you're supporting multiple right because mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day people might go three different people might go to the show for three different reasons but they're all kind of supporting the same entity and in weird ways supporting each other's thing you know because mm -hmm. it all kind of goes into a pool and then gets split accordingly so um yeah and like just make it mutually beneficial you know like i don't i don't want to like like uh you know hurt the musicians or like make them feel like they're not being fully appreciated for the sake of helping the environment and vice versa. Like I need to have integrity in terms of not just having fun and throwing shows for my friends, but also right. trying to have a p solid impact, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not, it, it, uh, sometimes those things can be in, you know, uh, opposite, not opposition, but can be back and forth with one another, you know? Um, cause like every dollar you donate to a nonprofit is a dollar that could have gone to a musician, you know? Right, and yeah. so, um, it just like being open and honest with how that all works and taking in feedback from people that we collaborate with and being willing to renegotiate if people feel strongly one way or the other. Yeah. Is that how you kind of try to tread the line? Just, uh, tell people up front 
what how you're splitting things and then talk to them after if they mm-hmm. feel unfair yeah. yeah it's generally just like you know i i keep it ambiguous at the beginning without getting too much into the you know logistics keep it ambiguous at the beginning say like i recognize everyone's efforts at promoting or being a part of the show and what you're doing to try to make it successful and so keep that in mind and then at the end you know giving kind of a summary as to what the plan is and then leaving a little bit of time before anything's finalized for people to like talk about it you know and mm-hmm. like talk privately obviously because you don't want to like you know whatever yeah. but um yeah and I, I gotta say like like without getting into specifics i've had issues with that like people have come up to me and been yeah. like yo i think that i should have gotten more or something and uh you know all i can really hope is that they know that i wasn't trying to like jip them or anything and then like making it right as much as i can you know just like like i said there's a, a being like open and honest and chill with people goes like a long way. And I can honestly say I've never had any beef or anything that went outside of, you know, a professional relationship, mm-hmm. like for that reason. So, well, I mean the, uh, as much as we like, don't want to have to admit it, like the finances thing, it, it like definitely plays a pretty, pretty big role in, in a lot of stuff. And yeah, I know like if you're, if you're doing music professionally, you know, odds are you're probably not involved. You're not, you're not investing your time and effort into it for the money Mm -hmm. uh, because in general, it's not really there. Right. Um, But I guess um, like with that in mind, I guess what are, what are some of the things um, sort of the things that you think about or some of the, some of the things that you strategize to do in order, uh, you know, to sort of like, um, I guess maximize what you what you can bring in mm-hmm. or, or market your events and yeah, things like that. Yeah, and yeah, have a successful uh, show because I you definitely know how to have a successful <laughs> show. As we all yeah, know. Well, I, de- I will say I've definitely also had unsuccessful ones. So I think that's mm-hmm. like just a part of it, you know. Um, that's sort of like that's sort of like a prerequisite, it's right? Like I mean, I feel like anybody that's done a cool thing has that. done some like silly things before. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, so. Um, I will say, I think one thing that I really like to do and I have varying, it doesn't always happen like this, but um, just like framing it and with the musicians that are playing, like we're all in this together, you know, like we, this show is going to do as well as we make it, you know, so like I'm not going to promise you anything more than what you're going to put into it, you know, so I'm going to kind of wait and see what you're going to put into it, to be honest, you know, um, and so that's one thing, it's just like, framing it in terms of like this is something we're all doing together because then like you're bringing friends not only for you but for everyone else and they're doing the same and you know so it's I think combining those efforts efforts in that way is like makes you more motivated too you know because like if you're the only one that's not hustling the show you know what I mean like you're gonna feel bad but like um yeah it's, it's just sharing the responsibility with everyone and then another thing that I learned only recently but I think is a very important distinction as a show booker is to realize which of the musicians are doing this as their full-time gig and how much time they're spending on this on a weekly basis, um, you know, and comparing that. Because, like, to be honest, when you're in the music scene, like a student music scene, there are a good amount of people that are just doing it, like you said, for the fun, and, like, they don't really care about the money, or they do, but, like, it's not, they're not using it to pay rent or something, right? And then there are other musicians that are. Like, they are, that is their rent money. And so, like, knowing that also kind of guides my ideas. Like, you know... Um, I'm not, I'm not going to pay you more just because you're doing that, you know, like it's not, it's not cut and dry like that, but keeping it in consideration, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. That's something that we kind of figured out as we started doing shows. It's just like out of necessity, like a band that's coming in through on tour, like they're just inherent expenses with what they're doing. Yeah. Not even their rent, their, their their gas, what ability to get home. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, there's all kinds of factors. Yeah. And I think you all do a really good job at that, you know, and and I think most people that I've seen at least is like prioritizing the touring musicians. It's like we're, you know, we're all coming to jam and see some new music and then just doing our best for people that are touring, you know. And uh, most of the time, anyone that's on a bill is going to be totally chill with that. So, yeah. You had had your whole notebook of a... (laughs) <laughs> I, did. Well, I had something I really want to talk about and I'm like stuck in my brain I like, can't remember what it was <laughs> I keep looking at this globe that's like totally shiny 
It is a shiny, shiny. And I can't even tell from here if it's actually got countries on it, it or if it it's does, just. It does, but okay. it seems like that is the like second tier important That's part I of feel. the design of the globe. It's like a disco ball creator. that also happens to have a world map on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. that always makes me, that globe in here always makes me think of the game where you spin a globe and you put your finger on uh, a random place and just oh, guess yeah. the country or whatever. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Is that a game that people play or is that just a game I played in third grade when <laughs> I was born? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, is it a game or is it like a pastime? Yeah, it's like, a there's pastime. Not really it was during reading like time specifically, actually, oh, I remember. Wow. Not reading and playing that game. I'm not going to lie, sad. I'd never win that game because I'd never be able to guess I don't know enough don't countries to guess it. Right, okay. Well. That's even better I mean, then. I guess from the tilt of it, maybe, you can try to determine where your finger was. But I don't think we really... Yeah, I think it was just kind of... More just like fun. Yeah, like, where, do you, where does it land? It was more like, yeah, I didn't feel like reading, doing reading time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that definitely sounds better than reading time. And now, nice. slow reading. <laughs> <laughs> I do uh, remember one thing that I was going to ask in that... Uh, that was... Uh, what's up next for you if you know yeah i know that i don't really know but uh, <laughs> but um yeah what what are you planning on doing with both your music and your um and new low and yeah yeah um so i with the music i've been kind of being a little low-key like i've been playing shows mostly um when other people ask me or, or, you know, like not organizing my own kind of like headlining shows, I guess yeah. for a minute. Cause I'd really like to spend some time making new material, making the next, you know, character installation, something that's really conceptually like rigorous and also has, you know, like something that I can say I put a lot of time into. Cause I think sometimes my, my process is more just like, Oh man, what's the next thing? All right, I'm doing it and blah, 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 you know? And it's yeah. fun too. And it's like, it's motivating, but um, I'd like to, you know, slow it down and maybe get, put some time in before and on that same note, I've been starting to make some of my own music, some of my own beats. And uh, I, d I love collaborating with live musicians, and there's just nothing like it. And especially, like, those shows this year were just so incredible. But, like, the logistics of having to organize, like, rehearsals and writing new music with the whole, you know, it's just right. impossible pretty much. So um, I think the transition is more just, like, I need to be able to function independently if i have to but then like when i have the opportunity to collaborate to fill out these things you know in a more serious way with the band um and then with new low uh i'm just trying to like you know keep doing it and get better you know like we were talking about just a second ago things we've been learning even in like the short time that we've been doing it you know and so one can only imagine what we'll know whatever five years from now but um just keep getting better at that and, and keep doing it with the same kind of conviction to you know, local music and the environment. And then also I'm thinking about kind of how do I expand, you know, like how do I do things that aren't only music shows in order to make this like a, an income for myself, but also have the largest impact, you know? So I started working a little bit doing video stuff. Um, I'd like to maybe start doing a new low like sessions type thing where I, you know, get bands in and do shoots with them and, uh, you know, using that as like cross promotional material for environmental nonprofits and stuff. So do you think um, you're going to, remain in Ann Arbor as your base for Nula or, mm. or are you thinking about elsewhere? So it's, I will say um, it's kind of at the mercy of, of what kind of job I get. Um, I've been applying to some stuff just around the area and also around the country, honestly. Um, so it's really hard to tell, but I will say that I would like to stay in Southeast Michigan because there's just a lot of cool people here. A lot of people we've already worked with, you know, and like Detroit is a really great place. A lot of people that I've known have been moving out there. So that's definitely a move. Um, and then if I go to a new place, I'm pretty much, I guess, just going to take the same approach to how I did this, you know, because um, any, anything that started in terms of opportunities or like knowing musicians or knowing what to do, it's just like showing up to shows, you know, you like you go in a new city, you just got to go to shows and you mm -hmm. just like meet the people that go there and you meet the bands that play there you know, so um, that's kind of exciting to think that there might be an opportunity to do that again in a new city. Um, but as of now, I think it'd be nice to keep keep chilling with some peeps I already know. So, yeah. Even in Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love Michigan, honestly, though. Like, there's something about it. Yeah. 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 Something about, I guess, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 well, you have. Hmm. You, you grew up in Michigan your entire life. Yeah. So as did, did I. <laughs> yeah, yeah me too yeah uh -huh. yeah so yeah. Well, I, I mean well then we're I'm, all biased I'm, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm right i'm sure that any state that 
you are originate from and you spend that much time in definitely um like helps inform and shape your worldview in, in a certain way i think Absolutely. michigan has done that in a really distinct way for me you know? that's cool um, I, th- I also think we're all witnessing kind of an exciting change in our local scene with what's going on in Detroit totally, right now. totally because um, at least the the change of how much was happening downtown from when i was a little kid to now oh, yeah, it seems because you were crazy. born in the detroit hospital so you've like, yeah. literally been a seeing... hospital that no longer exists <laughs> dang <laughs> that's crazy so you were literally like witnessing that environment kind of evolve for a couple for a while yeah now. i mean and I, I grew up in the suburbs but i have definitely always pushed to try to go to shows and seeing the difference in um i mean I, I i'm sure my awareness has also grown just based on being an adult and knowing more people yeah <laughs> right um um but but also just just there's definitely something happening right now totally which is um really exciting there's just there's an energy just ca- just coming back right now from uh from river days from working this whole weekend uh and watching just the riverfront be totally alive with like a million people coming to this event a million local bands playing and national acts and then uh, when you try to leave you can't get out because there's people everywhere because the tigers tigers had a game and uh shane uh shane park i guess had a show going on too so there's like all these shows all these people huge traffic jams which were i'm not did not have fun with the traffic jams but there were there were, we went to bars and and it was just really cool seeing uh, the town being be so alive, people everywhere and music everywhere. It was really. That sounds amazing. Really cool. I'm bummed I missed it. <laughs> yeah, no, I I couldn't agree more. Um, I I won't claim to know too much about that area, and my presence has been very like selective in my youth. You know, mm-hmm. mostly just going to shows and not really um, anything else, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, recently been trying to get out there a lot more, a lot more. I've seen a lot of interesting things going on and there's definitely like a very vibrant, you know, music and art kind of scene happening. And, uh, you just see, I mean, there's shows every weekend, you know, a b- bunch of different venues you got, you know, I don't know. It's just really exciting. Like you said, and, um, I can't wait to see where it's at. Yeah, some of the, some of the coolest spaces to have shows to totally um, yeah i mean like so tangent right i mean over movement like whoa yeah yeah i you also were got sound there yeah i was also running sound for the movement. tangent after yeah. parties and that was crazy to see that um warehouse kind of crazy space um come to life watch it change uh atmospheres as as it would go from day to day and and each show kind of had a different theme and what and uh and I got to see the back of it too, the like kind of behind the scenes part of all of these moving parts that make it exist. And there are a lot of spaces like Tangent that um, Tangent's been around for a while, but mm. there's a lot of other spaces that are popping up. I mean, um, I was just ta- just talking to some friends that are that uh, are starting a co-op down there. That's kind of um, I think they're calling it like Moon House or something. I'm I think I'm forgetting the name right now, <laughs> but it's. Uh, I haven't been down there yet, but they said the space is very similar to Tangent, this huge warehouse where they have uh, the ability to throw these, like, really, really real shows. Yeah. Like, and and then there's just this kind of no law part to Detroit that still exists. Not no law, but, like, kind it's, of just... It's a lot more... You see people doing some driving decisions goes. that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean, that's the yeah, the, yeah, the anything goes when kind I, of. When I've talked, when I've like asked somebody a question about something, like, hey, for this show, like, is uh, is it this way or is it this way or like you know it's or something, and they'll just want. be like, yo, it's it's chill, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Detroit. We'll just we'll just do whatever. Um, um, no, but yeah, so many cool spaces. Um, we're talking uh, like Tangent Gallery that size, and then, like. Um, Trouble like plexing, trouble, yeah. the trouble plex. Yeah. I guess that's a little bit smaller, but the same smaller, kind of a thing. Very, you can have yeah. like a super legit show there. Um, very cool space. They got the Zine Library that you can check oh, out. Oh man! Um, and um, like, what are some others? Like tires? Yeah, yeah. I was about to say um, tires is yeah. so rad. Um, 
that's got like the little skate park yeah. in the venue. <laughs> um, that that's a huge space. You can yeah, play, uh, gigantic shows and the lot yeah. outside. Yeah, I mean, tangents. I think even bigger actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tangents like um, several rooms of one about that size and another maybe a little smaller and then more past that the um they've got even like a, a welding shop in the back and like a whole living space dang yeah it's uh it's so cool to see what a lot of people have been doing now for a few for many years with um these warehouse spaces they've i feel like a lot of people have just been waiting for people to pay attention to the exciting things they've yeah, been up to. <laughs> totally. Yeah, maybe that's the most interesting part is that this stuff's probably been going on for a while before, you know, oh, people were definitely. even taking notice. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I think part of it too is of, you know, us kind of coming into a time where you you start to be able to drive yourself and then you go to college. So like I don't I don't feel so bad for not under knowing yeah. all of the cool stuff that was going on until like as as you're in the area more and more uh of your own person totally where your parents aren't gonna tell you, you go <laughs> hang out at a warehouse party in detroit oh man <laughs> yeah, I, they were not allowed allowed about to let me do that i mean i was f- i'm from northwest lower rural michigan so mm-hmm. that would have been like a 250 mile drive for me to try to do that <laughs> yeah no way I know my parents were even just like, I when I just go to like the Fillmore, they're like, "Oh, be careful," and I'm just like, "What?" You know, I don't know, but it's yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah. I've loved getting down there more often the last couple of weeks. So, um, you were talking about um, your kind of working on uh, your own beats, your own songs and stuff. Um, can we expect any recorded material or anything like that? Mm, I would definitely like that. I think that's been another thing that's kind of kept me from the recording. At first, the not recording was more of like a deliberate decision, I will say. It was like, I want this to be about the live shows Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm not so concerned with having music online. But more and more that I think about it, I mean, you know, you're doing a disservice to yourself by not having, you know, recorded music available to more people. So, um... There's also yeah, something to be like. said for spending a lot of time working your act out by playing shows before you put out. That's real too. Stuff because there's definitely a huge difference for us in like, um, just putting record playing something, recording it, putting it out, or or playing something for many months and then and then going into the studio after it's been well, worked yeah. I mean, out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've found that you have different goals if you're, like, if you're, like, using the studio to, like, write the music as opposed to, like, if you you have a you have a different goal playing live, and if you're trying to, like, replicate what you're doing live in the studio, that's obviously very, very different than writing in the studio. Totally, um, totally. So, yeah, I think that'll probably guide my approach a lot to the studio is, you know, using things that I learned through the live show. And especially something like mm-hmm. like more performance based, you know, like you you kind of have to do it live, like you know, to to find kind of what you, you know mm-hmm. your trajectory. So what what are you thinking about right now? A single, an EP, an album, or is it kind of up in the air? Let's see what happens mm-hmm. as it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I would have to say I'm gonna I'm gonna be realistic and say it's probably gonna be like some single action mm-hmm. at first, but um, you know the. The dream kind of has been to have like a mini release for for each character, Mm -hmm. you know, and that would be kind of the ideal world where um, you can listen to each of these small projects kind of in the context of the larger, you know, thing. And so how that'll exactly formulate, I'm not sure, but um, it'll really just depend on, you know, like parsing together, like like prioritizing what to be recording first, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think the end goal is to have, you know, some sort of release, you know, uh, for each character. Do you worry at all about people just getting, um, lost in all the names by that? I mean that like, I know for myself, I worry a little bit about, um, I have the band that that Sam and I play in Mm -hmm. and then I have my solo project, some like the season that's been an electronic project. And then I have other solo stuff that's grungy or rock stuff that I'm trying to decide right now, whether to put out under also summer like the season and confuse those genres or, uh, or under a new name. And, and the, the worry being that if it's a new name, then is it, 
even more confusing that there's another project going on that's also so do, do you kind of struggle with the, the you know people being like oh i thought i came to the alan c pickard show and who's broccoli and and just being like this is too much for for them to wrap their heads around or do you think feel like people just roll with it and they don't even care about all of the different they they enjoy the different characters and don't Mm-hmm. think too hard <laughs> you know i definitely think both because yeah, um i gotta tell you yeah so like when i so i did m- did the first show and it was uh the mind of alan c pickard mm-hmm. was the name of the show and then the second one was the office of feather pillow a business meeting like like comma a business meeting mm-hmm. and my roommate at the time was like rob I just like don't like why like why are you changing the name like I don't get it I don't know why you're calling it a business meeting you know and uh-huh. I and to be fair he wasn't really into like conceptual performance art that much so I think right. his his uh, answer was also you know a little different but I definitely do worry about that and that's kind of the reason why on bills I'm pretty much always broccoli now because the one like kind of another like dream type thing that I would have is you know, people, and this kind of happens sometimes. It's like, so, so broccoli will be on the bill and you know, broccoli's going to play, but you're not sure who is going to play or like, you know what I mean? Or what the mm-hmm. character is. And then if there were to be, I mean, this is like way off, like never happened slash long in the future where it's like, you're wondering which character is going to show up, you know, and you're kind of hoping that maybe one character does because you have this one song that you really like of that right. character, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and so, that's kind of like the goal and i think you have to sacrifice things like risking people not getting it and like people you know because i if i show up to a show as broccoli but then i get up on stage and i say my name is norman the foreman like a lot of people are like what are you talking about you know and so like (laughs) it's it's definitely a weird thing and i think people that understand the broccoli project are more used to it um but i think maybe a good step is uh having more of an online presence hoping to have like you know, a website or something similar like that where it's got some sort of explanation for the project so people can maybe, like, have a little bit of context coming in um, to prevent that confusion. (laughs) Because it definitely happens. I mean, I'm confused myself, so, like, obviously (laughs) other people, yeah. So, like, some of the things that I've gotten is, like, suggestions from, like, um, my family and friends that are, like, maybe casual listeners of music as opposed to doing it, like, professionally or... Or, or or like incessant fans or something is they they say like oh well if you're if you're like struggling to find success in your music why not make it more accessible um mm. do you find that having um i'm sp- specifically thinking like for for you like having kind of like all these different characters that you're working with having um having like an important aspect of what you're doing live to have this performance art quality do you find um like it's difficult to get people that are like maybe outside of like this kind of artistic music scene in arbor to like pay attention or um do you feel that like if you just keep doing your thing like people will get it yeah Um, because like i think that like when i go to a like when i go to a show and it's like performance art like maybe at a certain point in my life maybe i maybe that would like turn me off or i like would you know i would want to see something that's like more like prototypical like execution or something but like now i would find it like I, you know when it's done well like extremely powerful and can like get to the heart of like a lot of truths i don't know yeah so, um yeah i feel like, <laughs> there's a question there somewhere no i yeah i know i totally know what you mean um so i think that's been something i've definitely struggled with and if I can call it resolve, what I've resolved to do is um, try to make music and try to do a performance that is accessible on different levels, you know? So if you're going to sit there and watch this as if you would watch a performance art piece in an art gallery, there are things that you'll notice in the monologues or quirks in movements or changes in costume or different things like that that will definitely aid the experience. Like, it's there, you know? There, That thought is put into it. But at the same time, the songs need to function on their own as things that are engaging, you know, aesthetically or or whatever. And so, you know, not saying like making it dancey, but like, for example, 
you think about like like rap music and like conscious rap music and one of the main criticisms and I even sometimes have this criticism of like conscious rap music is that they will sacrifice sometimes the sound and the cadence of the their voice for the density of what they're saying and that can be a really difficult back and forth right because you can you could say like you know really you know long or like difficult or like words that people don't even know right and it's like really intelligent and really well done and as a lyricist it's quite the feat right but like if people aren't listening to it or if it's not sonically pleasing like there's something to be said about that too right. um you know totally. so i think it's always a line that i try to kind of like balance is like i want this to be listenable um i don't want to sacrifice what i'm saying to make it pop rap stuff you know um but i want it to have that kind of vibe that what i think makes rap appealing in some ways you know it's like the way the vocals lay on the beat and like you know the I, I mean not even bravado because I feel like it's it's more I'm too cynical to have bravado <laughs> as broccoli and also it's like kind of like what what uh Chance the Rapper said he's like on his latest album and, and latest album by the way coloring book just so insane like please listen to it if you haven't already but I'm um listen to it for weeks is, <laughs> but um and, he's a huge and, and he says She's it's so uh, the right moment no, right. You need to do it in a way for the right it's moment. Be very focused. <laughs> I love Chance. <laughs> um, but yeah, but he says he says something about being like like the only rapper with humility, and I, that's an overstatement. But I will say that in rap music, humility is not a quality that's overly abundant. You know, no, and it's all so about the right, yeah. the is the right. Is a yeah, and so yeah, but yeah, like I said. Um, you know, just making something. I, I'm not trying to alienate anybody um, by doing super weird or intricate stuff. Um, I'm doing it for myself and for the people that are into it. But um, at the same time, I want something to be there for other people too. Yeah, I mean, I think that what's I think that you do a great job of treading that line. I mean, Thank it, you. of making it like this really, like the music's good. Like it's good, it's cool <laughs> stuff, and, and it's poetic, and it says something, and then it also has this kind of like exciting performance aspect where I, I never know what to expect <laughs> oh man i'm glad to hear that um and i gotta sorry i gotta give a quick plug because uh broccoli the project the musical project as it has existed up to this point i am so eternally indebted to all of the wonderful musicians that have played with me including the two of you um <laughs> but yeah like i just i i cannot stress enough that like this would not have been possible without you know the contributions of so many talented musicians and who you know helped me to realize this weird ass vision that I had you know and like they they just musically I couldn't I couldn't have done it simply could not have done it and so um yeah it's really I feel really good to know um that they were down with it and yeah I just hope they know how much I appreciate them including you guys <laughs> well we we appreciate what you've been doing um thanks yeah I think I think that uh, yeah, it's been it's been really interesting. Um, just like just like growing up or going through the college experience here and just watching, um, just like all these. At first, you know them as like, oh, this one kid that like I see at <laughs> this part, <laughs> right, or whatever. Yeah. And then like, and then and then like you go, you start going to open mics and they're performing, and all of a sudden like they're in a group or in a band, and and now here you are. Uh, you know, after it's all said and done and they're like, they're doing it. And that's yeah. just, like amazing to see. And so I just really appreciate getting to see that with you. Dang. Thank you. And equally so with you all, I think uh, I'm thinking back to the first time I may have seen you guys perform and it might have been that cave show in the Arb. Yeah, and I don't know if that was the very first time, but that was so tight. And yeah, I mean, e equally so, like Speaking so of, interesting. Oh if you heard my phone going off like crazy, it's, Alex Coy live texting me every reaction while she watches the Game of Thrones. Oh <laughs> so wow! So does that so count as a spoiler? Yeah, or, a does does that count as a spoiler? Or are they like ambiguous enough? She to knows not? I've seen it. Oh yeah, okay, good then. Okay. But I won't. I won't give any spoilers on this. <laughs> Another example <laughs> of a of a talented musician that just relocated to the Detroit area. Right. Totally. Um, Actually, she's got a bunch of shows coming up. Do you actually have any? Yeah, what shows are your shows, personal and new? Stuff low? Coming up, yeah. just so we can get it plugged. Before. Yeah, so I think uh, I think the next one is going to be it's the Thursday of 
um, Ann Arbor Art Fair. So I think that is like the 21st or something it's of yeah. July. Yeah. And so that'll be a date at Club Above. Not sure exactly what it'll look like yet. Um, and then we also, Nulo has a date at uh, the Loving Touch on August 11th. And so those both will be shows. Um, that's about all I can say about them right now. <laughs> but um, nice. yeah, uh, super excited about it. And then other than that, I guess we'll see. I'll be sure to let you guys know. So. I'm going to also plug um, some Veil vale House shows that are yes, happening yes. because um, because this podcast kind of started as um, a thought of when we bring in all these out of town out of these all these touring bands to Vale House, it would be cool to have some sort of uh, actual conversation with them instead of just having them come and play and also have some record of of these cool parties that we throw that uh, just yeah, people that's, experience that's pretty and much then. How the Go idea home. to have the podcast started is that like oh you're gonna have a bunch of bands here anyway why not talk to them yeah so we have we're lucky to be having a, a weird wednesday show coming up and that is on the 29th we're gonna be having porky's groove machine <laughs> um from wisconsin i don't know where in wisconsin i forget but they are awesome and groovy and tear soup um which one of the members of tear soup lives here will be playing and scissor now i'm really excited uh we've we haven't had them at Vale in my time being here. I don't know if they've played here before really ever. Unique stuff. How can you attempt to describe them to the listener that might not have an idea of what it is? Because like, it's like groovy punk. <laughs> yeah. You have groovy funky punk. <laughs> funky punk. Oh man, that um, needs to be a genre. It's, it's. I don't know. It's awesome. You just gotta. You gotta. Check them out live if you can at Fail House. And if not, check them out online because I know they have a bunch of stuff online, right? I, I know they have music out there. I do have, I know I've listened to one of their records online. So they definitely have some stuff. We also, speaking of um, Evan Haywood, who just played at your show on Friday, he'll be here at Fail House on June 5th, or July, sorry, July 15th. Um, that show is going to be Evan Haywood, uh, Ian Perfect and sam and i will be his backing band and yeah. um who's who goes by neighborhood as his solo artist name and then um there will be uh clay is going to be doing clay what's clay's last name dawson. <laughs> oh dawson, dawson. Yeah. <laughs> clay is just clay to me he's like this <laughs> <Yeah>. magical clay <laughs> clay, <laughs> clay, from, clay from our yeah. review yeah. he doesn't Platonic even live there anymore yeah. yeah um yeah clay will be playing a solo set and I think he might be playing with us too. Um, That's it's time to practice. And um, Evan, Evan Haywood. I said uh, Evan Haywood. Well, yeah, oh, you said oh, that, and but Kind he, of Animal but, is the other band. That's Dan Ackerman, um, who was in Witch Elm. Which yeah. all that kind of started my understanding of Vale's music scene was Witch Elm living here and playing um, shows here. So yeah, That's really excited the first to have show Dan that back I ever here. Saw out of Vale House was Witch Elm, probably. That's so rad. Um, but and there's a guys, bunch more. If well, you guys we'll are uh, in a music shop, I know that um, Evan Haywood just got his LP Ramshackles pressed for vinyl. So if yes. you're in any of the local yes, music yes. shops around, look for that. It's got a, a um, like a hand drawn picture of his face yeah. on it. They're um, so good. He picked yeah. them up actually in Cleveland the the day before I think the uh, the show last Friday, and so I'm sure they're at Encore, or if not now, then soon. So cool. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have you listened to his album yet? So good, so good. Ian told me it's amazing. Yeah, listen, yeah. he's a I'm pretty sure unreal, cool yeah, stuff. musician. Yeah, right. Sweet. I don't. That was a pretty good. That was a pretty good wrap up. Uh, do, do you have anything else that you wanna um, say that we didn't talk about or? <laughs> um. No. Honestly, just really happy <laughs> to be here. Corners. Yeah. No. <laughs> super happy to do this. Thanks again. Um, for having me. It was yeah, like super nice. Yeah. Totally. Check out Rob's stuff, Broccoli Online. Yes. Broccoli Unofficial. Yes, Broccoli Facebook Unofficial page. on Facebook. Um, New Low on Facebook as well. That's N-U space L-O. Um, and then uh, if you search Broccoli Blind Pig on YouTube, there will probably be some videos. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to...